noise, it's the Cube. Covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. And now your host, Dave Vellante. Hi everybody, we're back. This is the Cube. We're here at VMworld 2015. We're at Moscone North. Right at the street level, come on by and see us. This is a really amazing setup here. We've got dual cubes this year. Peter Cutts is here, the Vice President of the EMC Solutions, Focus on Cloud. Peter, great to see you again. Thanks for coming on. Good to see you as well. So Thanks this for is, having me. This is, uh, you're welcome. So this is like the, uh, I guess, you know, EMC World's your Super Bowl. This is kind of <laughs> like the playoffs, even though, you know, so the semifinals. But uh, big show for you guys. I mean, you know, wheelhouse, customer base, it's your peeps. That audience is expanding. Um, you know, we're hearing a lot of DevOps, you know, you're talking not just storage admins, you get all kinds of, you know, additional roles. But so, you guys have been very active in the hybrid cloud space. Hybrid cloud, a big theme of this show. So give us the update on what you guys are doing, what you're doing in hybrid cloud, announcements that you're making, and what's going on at VMworld for you. Yeah, so the show has been incredible, you know, to this point, the keynotes have been great. I think when you think about the unified hybrid cloud and then the Federation Enterprise Hybrid Cloud, which is really kind of an instantiation of that, giving an example of having a complete offering that can bridge off, uh, off premises, uh, you know, it just matches the, the messaging, ties together with our launch, which is really about continuing down that journey and offering, you know, more features and extending you know, the number of sites we support and adding the number of use cases to protect data. Um, also adding, you know, kind of automation in a way of how people continue to deliver applications from a standpoint of making sure that they can create them and run them through their life cycle. Again, fitting completely in with uh, the themes that are going on here. So, tons of alignment, security with NSX, all tied into the Federation Enterprise Hybrid Cloud. Uh, really just a, a great kind of tie together across the board. So, I mean, it, it fits so well, it feels very aligned and our customer attraction and excitement is just so high and it's just been phenomenal. Yeah, so you guys have obviously stepped up your emphasis on the, the Federation. I mean, Joe Tucci has came out and said, you're going to see more from us on the Federation. It's a strategic advantage for us. How has the Federation sort of changed the conversation in the customer base? Well, I think for those customers that are interested in the federated offering, which really is a complete kind of holistic, inclusive offering that allows you to kind of get the outcome in a very short period of time in a reliable, repeatable fashion, I think that's really what's, you know, kind of enticed customers to be really invested and understand the value they pull out of that. And, you know, having that repeatability in those customers, you know, that have come out and understood that, you know, driven huge amounts of savings, uh, with customer coming out saying tens of millions of dollars easily saved through the kind of implementation and driving of the enterprise hybrid cloud. Those are the things that we kind of continually see and we're driving, you know, over and over again. So, EMC has had a vision of hybrid cloud uh, for a while. I mean, when cloud first came about. <laughs> and uh, sort of laid out this notion that you're going to have stuff in your, your data center, you're going to want to move stuff outside, you're going to want to apply the same corporate edicts for security and compliance and governance internally and externally, and you want that sort of seamless solution. That's a vision that you put forth, I want to say, at least five or six years ago. And then, and then it became, okay, we got to do this. I, I, <laughs> so. I think you, you kind of summarized it very well. I think we had a great vision and we were a little ahead of our time and I think that what's come into our, our kind of wheelhouse in the last few years is we've been able to make that real, fit with compliance, fit the corporate governance in, fit the security models all into a package solution that customers can execute on very quickly and actually be able to focus on their line of businesses, their business units and their application developers to make sure that they're, they're delivering services and not worrying about how does infrastructure tie in, how does my backup policy fit in, how does all my corporate compliance fit. I can automate all that into a complete self-service experience and I can then do chargeback, showback and make sure that uh, I'm operating a true cloud model. So from a standpoint of you know, making it quick, fast, repeatable and again, adding all the services and focusing on value. That's what it's really so, about. So, and the problem with hybrid cloud, in my opinion, in the last five years, is it hasn't been a solution. You're in the solutions group, so, and you can't just make a solution overnight. So, right. it takes a lot of work. So, talk about the components of that solution, how you've actually gone from concept to piece parts to solution. Yeah, so I think the, the kind of journey was, started a couple years ago with a few people sitting down looking at it saying, you know, what does cloud mean for the Federation, but what does cloud mean overall for EMC? And when we started to look at it, we said, look, there's some automation layers that have to be there. One is the cloud MNO, one is a hardware MNO, one is a storage MNO, and one is an, a network MNO. 
And I think some of the pieces were just coming together when you look at Viper, NSX, uh, and you, you kind of layer on top of that the vRealize suite and its kind of growth. All of those tied together with the surrounding products really created the foundation for us to be able to get to the level of automation and experience that we can drive today. So using not only the whole vRealize and vCloud suite, but then dropping into the EMC portfolio for the right tier of infrastructure, converged infrastructure, or just uh, the components they need to deliver services. Okay, so let's talk proof points. How's it going? Customer traction, examples? Customer traction is great. We have a couple of uh, great references who have been speaking at the show, as well as um, going through some public examples of how their savings and their operational uh, kind of, what I would call, uh, effectiveness has gone up substantially. Um, when you think about UNI, uh, UNT and looking at uh, University of North Texas, you know, quoted as saying, look, this is a way I can transform my operational model, transform my people, and deliver better services to our students and end customers, and literally achieving that through a very short path, focus on my catalog, deliver value, and again, that's just a, a real you know, valued example of how you can transform uh, significant traction in the financial industries with a little less uh, open naming, <laughs> but um, from a standpoint pick of Pick your just, bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pick your bank, there's quite a few of them. And um, you know, a lot of traction with making sure that you, know, you go from a, a one specific example where um, you know, trying to drive better reliability and effective services and self-service and deliver to their business units. I mean, everybody knows, I don't have to go through it, Let's face it, all of the um, industries are changing, mobile banking apps, the way you do loans, you know, the way you even do um, personal mortgage insurance, all of those things Freaking can be accelerated. Bitcoin. <laughs> all of those say. things can be accelerated. And then, of, of course, in healthcare, delivering um, you know, targeted environments and services you know, basically to hospitals and healthcare and pharmaceutical. So again, it's, it's really cross-industry for us. We haven't, you know, one vertical, I would say financials is very strong, but I'd say it's across verticals. Everybody needs the automation. Everybody needs the service levels. Everybody needs the protection, uh, specifically for their platform two applications, and everybody needs to drive cost out to go invest in new platforms. And you mentioned before self-service. Self-service across the board. Is a key component of this. And it's, it's, well, we did a study recently, and it, 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 we were sort of comparing, if you're an enterprise with typical enterprises, you know, it's an application portfolio, the average age of the app is 20 years. Right, so they're not just going to shove all that stuff into a Can't. public cloud. So, but at the same time, you know, public cloud is another you know arrow in the quiver. Sure. So, but what your, if my understanding is your strategy, and we looked at this in the study, is you're enabling the ability of the organization to say, okay, I'm going to essentially maintain my existing processes. I'm going to you know modernize them to be more cloud-like and agile, and I'm not going to have to rip and replace all those and learn new. And so that's a major cost advantage, time to market ad advantage. Is that a fair summary? It is. It, there's a little bit of transformation required, though, from the, t from the approach. When you think about the cloud and the automation, what's really important about it is, you're right, the processes and, and the kind of governance models, and you know, this has to have a seven-year retention, and this has to have 15-minute you know, RPO, those things don't change. But the way they're implemented by automation and through the system is different. As an example, you know, we don't create LUNs on storage arrays. We don't create network segments and actually go in and assign IP addresses to ports anymore. We don't go in and create a VM. The end user drives that whole experience, and basically the automation drives, whether it's a multi-tiered application with database, you know, could be um, middleware and, of course, a web presentation layer. They choose those things. They pick the compliance requirements, or they're forced on them by IT, by, so this, by the user business. says, give me some storage, or That's give right. me some compute. Give me, give me an application, yeah. give me a VM, or give me storage, could yeah. be, but it's mostly like give me my service, platform as a service, application as a service, yeah, give okay. me those things, and all of those underlying things, I don't need to know how they work, but I get the services So the it. infrastructure is sort of at the back end provisioned for them. Right. Okay, so what kind of training do you have in place to help organizations go from where they are today, which you know, we don't have to describe the typical IT organization, to this enterprise hybrid cloud approach? Great question. So we have a full cloud certification suite that literally goes across and teaches you basically cloud from a strategy perspective, architecture perspective, and again, not EMC specific at first. It's really meant to first of all look at cloud and address the issues of automation and transformation, and then moving actually into um, the kind of more specific federation enterprise hybrid cloud should you want to get there. But a full curriculum, and again, leveraging all of VMware's training and the federation together, it gives you a differentiated experience and a way to get there quickly. We're talking to Peter Cutts, who run, runs the, the cloud solutions business for enterprise uh, hybrid cloud at EMC. How are organizations 
changing internally? Is the org chart changing? Are the roles changing? Are the titles changing? Can you address that? Yeah, so I mean, one of the things that I learned when we first started this was the org charts are changing in, in a lot of ways, but for the positive, a lot of people are able to focus more on value-added services to the customers, the catalog, the important things, the application transformations, the other things that you really need to do. And so there are some structural changes that go along with that. And we think of someone like a cloud architect or a cloud administrator or a cloud operator or a cloud kind of capacity planner. Those are the roles and less so, you know, again, storage is more part of it, network is more part of it. And again, you know, being able to create services is really kind of the portfolio. And then of course, the big org chart change that's a really challenging for customers, but a huge opportunity is creating, you know, almost like your own product management or services kind of sales group to go in and say, you know, what do you need sales or marketing? What data sets do you need? How can I make them accessible? You know, those type of things and, and driving kind of a different relationship between IT and the business units. So your, your portfolio of services and offerings uh, it ex extends beyond just EMC. You've got a whole Absolutely. partner portfolio. I'm particularly interested in the public cloud piece of that. What what does that look like? I mean, obviously, vCloud Air is in there. You just made an acquisition of VirtuStream, which I'm sure you're figuring out. Um, maybe can you talk about that component? Yeah, so I think from a standpoint of the, the beauty that customers are looking for is a single portal and a single way to provision, whether it's private or public. And what we provide today is that experience on AWS and vCloud Air. And the uniqueness that you have of being able to measure, meter, charge back, be able to control and allow kind of different access or free access, depending on your policies, to that infrastructure and allow that kind of capability of consuming new resources. Again, single portal, great experience. I think what's also unique about the vCloud Air um, experience in this case is that you can move workloads that are offline back and forth between that infrastructure based on the NSX and then soon to be online with the vMotion that was talked about. Mm. That's differentiated right there. So people can have applications that are running in, you know, on premises and actually move it off premises, you know, while it's running. Today it's off prem it's a it's an offline move, but at least you can still move it exactly how it is and restart it. And that's a very unique kind of option for customers to be able to go in and out. So when customers think about I mean, it depends. It depends which customer you're talking about, but but Generally, the model in many customers' eyes is I got infrastructure as a service, I got platform as a service, and I got software as a service. Let me start at the top and work way down. So, SaaS is popping up everywhere, SaaSification, and you guys aren't, you know, maybe there's some SaaS products in the, in the federation somewhere, but generally speaking, you know, an apps company. So, where do those fit in the offering? I mean, you're, you're supporting apps, obviously. Where does the SaaS piece fit in? If it's, you know, a Salesforce, for example, or a Workday, how do you interact with those pieces of my infrastructure? Well, I think from a standpoint of um, just because you go to a SaaS provider or to, to any one of those services, the fact is your data is still critical and you still need to be able to access it, back it up, control it, and do those, uh, those functions. And some places you may leave that up to the SaaS provider and in some cases you may want a function to be able to take that off you know, their premises or their cloud and back it up to a different cloud. And as a function, that's actually what you know, EMC is actually focused on with spanning as a technology acquisition. Yep. And then you look at other customers who are looking to archive to a public cloud and, and use that as a tier of backup. Again, from the Maginatics, now Cloud Boost kind of approach. So we're adding these features in to the enterprise hybrid cloud to allow those to be accessible to customers. So still looking at SaaS as being part of it uh, and making sure that we at least acknowledge and, and make sure we can support that. So the customer has the choice if they, they the want to just run a you know, thousand different bespoke processes, go for it, but you're offering a way to do it as one. And then, and then the PaaS layer, obviously Cloud Foundry, you know, Absolutely. as part of the federation. That's a you know, key component. Yes. Talk about the PaaS layer a little bit. Yeah, so when you think about the PaaS layer, that's when customers truly make the kind of journey what I, from what I would call to LAMP stack or you know, stack-based development into you know, a next generation approach with Cloud, Pivotal Cloud Foundry specifically. And you know, transforming their developers, transforming the way they deal with it, but having a reliable infrastructure underneath it that, that can actually scale out to web scale. You know, the new announcement we have with the VX rack offering a different tier underneath, being able to scale out and provide that performance and reliability, but not going to, to kind of the traditional um, block route for something of that approach. Again, all options underneath the umbrella. And again, it allows flexibility for the right choice infrastructure at the right time for the right solution. And how about the data layer? I mean, if I want a data service at, uh, from Cloud Foundry, that, that's part of it? Um, so from the catalog that we've built right now, you can provision um, HDFS as a service yep. and basically access it through 
uh, any of the um, distributions that you, you may choose. So, you know, Pivotal HD is integrated by default on uh, the big data suite, and from the standpoint of, you know, Hortonworks and Cloudera, also, again, options, because we use Isilon on the back end, which allows that multi-port. But that class of storage is actually available in the catalog for the, for the end user to consume and, and obviously pay for. And then how do you go to market? Maybe we could talk about the sort of ecosystem that you've built, the partners, you know, the direct sales force, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so I think when we started this, we were extremely focused on direct because we were trying to learn the motions and, and kind of gain, you know, how this would flow and how we'd be successful. And we did a lot of enablement on our sales force as well as VMware's, so across the federation. I think that now what we've seen is our partners are, are really good at this and they have a lot of skills in this area. And so we've built this kind of program around federation ready and you know, Enterprise Hybrid Cloud is really kind of a, a culmination of the example of where we're starting. And it, it's a really valuable program and our partners are embracing it and they're fitting right into that mold because they have the skills across the stack already. And so it's been a real powerful, you know, kind of new arrow in our quiver, if you will. And mm -hmm. it's, it's growing and it's a great experience. Um, last question, uh, actually last, second to last, the penultimate question. So what should we be looking for in terms of progress that you want to make over the, let's say 12 to 18 months for your, your organization? What are the signs of success? What are the parameters that we should be paying to as outside observers? Yeah, so I, I think the um, continued growth and, and adoption and energy by customers is there. I mean, the, we are larger than, than what I would call most startups would ever be inside a company in, a, in under a year or a year and a half, we'll say, mm -hmm. of true operation and sales. Um, what we'd like to do is continue that growth, but continue that partnership with our customers and our partners to make sure that we're focusing on the end user developer and line of business and making sure we tie that all together into the solution and, and keep that focus so we make sure that we're, we're providing the services needed up the business la layer and keep that relationship very strong. That's where we focus, that's where we've been, and we want to continue that. And if we continue that focus, I believe that we'll add more services to the catalog and we'll also make that transition to complete and help really deliver the full application lifecycle management. And then my, my final, final question is just, you know, impressions, VMworld, you know, conversations at the show, you know, what's the bumper sticker? To give us your thoughts. Um, it's exciting. I think when we first uh, started the kind of initiative, it was always about explaining what it was and how we did it and why we did it. And I think customers are coming back to us now going, this just makes total sense. And, and uh, all joking aside, before we got here, I was kind of asked the same question, like how are the customer meetings going? I'm, I don't want to say they're never easy, but it's great to have good conversations and be able to help customers transform very quickly and makes, make very quick progress, uh, fast progress, and, and help them deliver to their customers what they need. So we want to continue that journey, and it's been exciting. And the theme of the show is perfect, and it fits into everything we're doing. Yeah, customers are excited. They're sort of open to new models. They, they really want to, as you said before, move value up the chain. So Peter Cutts, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. It's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you, great to see you as well. Thanks for having me. All right, me. you're welcome. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. This is theCUBE, we're live from San Francisco. Be right back. <laughs>